Hi, and welcome. This update video introduces cross number 13. It features a striking gray-based white male and two females from cross 8. You've seen brief clips of this cross, but this is its dedicated video and the first part of its series. For new viewers, my name is Ivan, and I'm aiming to establish a stable Snow White guppy line. Cross 13 is a new breeding experiment that combines individuals from crosses 7 and 8. This cross is part of my next step in my project where I merge separate lines together. I initiated cross 13 on August 8th by pairing a promising male from cross 7 with two females from cross 8. I labeled this gray-based male as C7AM, and he was the most vibrant white guppy from cross 7, standing out from his more translucent brothers. His gray-based body color is noteworthy, as I've primarily focused on blonde-based guppies. The C7A male is the first male selected from cross 7, hence the letter A in his label. My hope is that his exceptional white coloration strongly contributes to the snow white line. When selecting females, I used Cross 5 as a reference. Cross 5 was one of my earliest experiments that produced guppies with the Snow White phenotype. With only four total phenotypes, the females from Cross 5 were the best representation of the female version of the Snow White phenotype. Their white coloration was primarily on the tops and bottoms of their tails. So using this as a guide, I chose two blonde-based females from cross 8 with the strongest white coloration in the same areas, avoiding those with darker spots on their tail edges. I believe cross 13 has a high chance of producing snow white guppies. It shares similar genetics with cross 11, with the addition of the gray-based body color. As with cross 11, I'm unsure if the parents are homozygous or heterozygous for magenta or storsbok. However, the same prediction methods used in cross 11 can be applied here. For more details, check out the card in the corner linking to the relevant video. Unlike cross 11, cross 13 features a gray-based male. His father, Gandalf, was blonde-based, making our male heterozygous for gray. This means we're pairing a heterozygous gray-based male with two blonde-based females. A Punnett square predicts a 50-50 split between gray and blonde-based offspring. This is exciting because it means cross 13 will likely produce both the typical blonde-based snow white guppies and new gray-based snow white variations just like my C7A male. Let's quickly predict the likely outcomes of cross 13 regarding the genes necessary for the snow white phenotype. All fry should express European blau, a recessive trait likely responsible for eliminating red pigment. Storsbach is a recessive trait associated with reduced red pigment and metallic sheen. As with cross 11, I'm unsure if the females are heterozygous for Storsbach. I predict that 50% to 100% of the fry will express Storsbach. I'm treating magenta as a dominant trait that spreads a reddish magenta color throughout the fish, which is then subsequently masked or removed by the previous two traits. It also adds a metallic sheen. Like cross 11, I'm unsure if the parents are homozygous for magenta. I predict that 75 to 100% of the offspring will express magenta. Finally, regarding base body color, my C7A male is heterozygous. This means we can expect 50% of the offspring to also be heterozygous for gray-based body color. The takeaway here is that I expect most, if not all, offspring to exhibit either the blonde or gray-based snow white phenotype. Okay, so far, there have been three fraud drops on September 7th, 18th, and 30th. Surprisingly, distinguishing between blonde and gray-based fry was initially difficult, unlike in previous broods. I was worried that I completely misunderstood the inheritance patterns for this characteristic. 
Luckily, as the fry matured, the gray-based ones darkened, revealing the expected 50-50 split. They're still a little lighter gray than usual, though. I think this could be due to the expression of European Blau on a gray-based guppy. These fry look healthy, and the oldest batch is only about a month and a half old. While it'll take some time for their colors to develop, I'm eager to see the final results and how closely they match my predictions. We might get a better sense of this in the next update video on Cross 13. Amidst the excitement of this new cross, I have some sad news to share. I'm always searching for affordable and effective ways to protect fry from their parents. I currently use floating plastic trays from the dollar store, which I prefer because they're white and allow me to easily spot hidden fry. However, the larger trays still allow adult guppies to swim through. To address this, I experimented with placing smaller trays with holes too narrow for adults inside the larger ones. Unfortunately, my C7A male got stuck in one of these holes and passed away. This is a bummer. I really liked this male. But despite his passing, the females are pregnant and will continue producing fry for several months. I've removed the secondary container and replaced it with a similar one that allows adults to swim through. I've noticed that adult guppies rarely enter this secondary tray. The misaligned slots might make the holes appear smaller, deterring adults from entering. This could be a beneficial solution, allowing adults to pass through if needed while providing a safe haven for fry. Overall, even with the loss of my C7A male, Cross 13 is progressing. I have a promising batch of fry and expect more soon. This cross should produce a significant number of snow white guppies, bringing me closer to my goal of a true breeding line. If you're interested in following Cross 13's progress, stick around by subscribing and joining me in this journey. I have other ongoing crosses, with Cross 14 being the focus of the next video. Cross 14 is a unique experiment, featuring a male with a reddish wash. Despite this red wash, he carries a new iridescent forehead trait I hope to incorporate into my Snow White line. This cross will be complex, but fascinating. Here are some quick updates on my other crosses. Crosses 10 and 12 haven't produced fry yet. I'm considering decommissioning cross 12 and using the male in a different cross. I suspect the cross 7 females he was paired with might not be viable. Cross 9 is almost fully matured, and I'll detail their phenotypes in the next video. Stay tuned for that one. Almost all Cross 9 offspring are male. Cross 11 is thriving, with several new fry joining the group. Some males are starting to show signs of color and will soon join the two Snow White brothers. For a more detailed statistical analysis on why I believe non-magenta or non-Storsbach fry have a low probability in this brood, watch this video on Cross 11. The inheritance patterns for these traits are similar in both crosses. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.